a quorum being present, the second half of our annual town meeting will now come to order. Madam Clerk, has the warrant been po properly posted as required by the general laws of the town of Granby? Yes, it has. Please rise as select board chairman, Mr. Joyce, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands Sitting in the front tonight, we have our school committee, our finance board, our select board, our town administrator, our town attorney, and to the, my left, our town clerk. Please note, if you are a non-resident or a non-voter, please sit in the back of the room in the specially marked area. And also, if you'd like to discuss a motion, please line up behind the mic and I will acknowledge you to come forward. And when you come forward, please state your name and your address and then your comments. If you are unable to come to the mic, please raise your hand and I will have a mic runner come to you. As usual, please do not direct any comments or discussion directly to a member at town meeting. Direct them towards me and I will direct them to the appropriate person. Lastly, please note that in your handouts you have that orange guide to talk about town meeting procedure, which will help you with procedures such as asking for an amendment or a secret ballot or other procedures. The moderator will now recognize Mr. Joyce of the select board to speak. She just thought of the egg timer. Uh, I'm going to do what's called the state of the town of Granby, and I'm going to do a little bit different because I've spent more time sitting out there than I have here, and I've learned the first thing. I don't know half of what I thought I did out there. So I'm going to try and brief everybody what's going to happen tonight as well as goes on. Uh, I want to put in a thing for our state representatives as well. Eric Lesser, Daniel Carey, and Mindy Dom. They have office hours in our town, and without their support, we can't get anything passed through legislation or grants. Uh, on the town's website is posted when they're going to be in the town, the location, and the time. If you get a chance, please stop by and introduce yourself. If you have something you want to talk about, feel free. But we rely a lot on them, and we need to make ourselves visible to them so when we need something, they are going to listen to us. Okay. Per the physical 2018 audit, we are in, in sound financial position. Our town currently has a AAA bond rating. But we need to be conscious to maintain or increase our stabilization funds because we're very close to the limit. Tonight, you will hear a current balanced budget, and in whatever you hear will have no effect on the bond rating. The challenges we have, op option post-employment benefits, OPEB. That is the benefits the town employees have accrued over the time, and the amount is $21.9 million. We have to look, as other municipalities look, how are we going to fund this? Because currently it's not funded. So under the new mandate to the state, you've got to start putting your money away for this. As some people may have been affected in the past, some of the businesses went under, all the retirement money went away, well, the state's not allowing even the towns to do that now. So that's one of our big concerns for the future. Another big concern for the future is the curbside contract, which includes the yard and bulky waste. We're in our last year. And there's gonna be a large increase because nobody wants recyclables. Since nobody wants recyclables, it's all considered trash. So be advised when we get farther down the road in the public hearings and stuff, be ready for a shock. 
Uh, as far as the meetings, Reddit, your expectations on a, our limited budget we have here, we need to increase the revenue in our town. I think everybody's in agreement with that. One of the first steps we're gonna do is we're gonna hire a grant writer and a combination planner and conservation individual. And there'll be articles that you hear later tonight get more specific on that. I'm just giving you an overall view. Another example is a lot of people have been complaining about the conditions of our parks, whether it's Dufresne, Cooley, um, Brown Allison, and so on. We're going to request some park people to do the mowing and things like that to maintain our parks so you people can have them. We need to maintain an affordable property tax. Today, 24.4% of our residents in Granby are age 60 and over, and that's only increasing. And a lot of these people are on low income. That's one reason I went forward for that Healthy Incentive Program, which now Red Farms and Sapolsky is, in, is in, involved with, where people on low income can go get healthy vegetables and it's not taken off their card. They get so much per month. The school budget takes up approximately 67% of our town budget. Uh, and if anybody wants to know, about 16% of the students that we have here are non-resident. They're student of choice. The East Meadow School Project came in under budget. When the MSBA closes the project, which will be very shortly, we're planning to come before you and recommend transferring the surplus from that to our stabilization funds. Again, we're very close to the limit. Also, one of the main things that we need to address is our junior senior high school. It was built in 1961, and we have to start addressing its needs. Responsibility for renewable energy. One of the things that we're looking at, and we currently have a grant to cover it, and I, I would have mentioned this on Article 1, but we never had that portion of it, is the Granby Electric Department. Once energy is being developed in your community, you are allowed to regulate it. If you want to go online, look up the town of Ashland. They're a town similar to us, and they're creating it with solar, and they save their residents the first year over $785,000 in electric cost. Also, with the solar moratorium, we need to update our bylaws. Uh, solar farms should be allowed in Granby, but like a lot of the residents here and other surrounding towns, they just don't want to be seen by the butters of our public way. And really, if you look at the marijuana bylaws that you passed earlier, that's really no different. You cannot see the marijuana plants from a public way. So we should look at the soil the same way, because we want to keep Granby rural and a beautiful countryside community. And if we're going to remove trees, other municipalities have already submitted bylaw changes to the Attorney General's office and they've been approved. One of the bylaws says, if you cut down a tree with a 20 inch waist, you have to plant a new tree. And the tree will be planted between the solar farm and the abutters or the solar farm and the public way to help reduce the visibility during all four seasons. In addition, on our bylaws, we need to meet the green community requirements I will be doing other things with our energy committee and economic development in the future, but those are the bylaws that need to be addressed right now. And this is my biggest thing. We need more resident involvement with town committees. I mean, look at us here tonight. We got over 4,500 registered voters, and I don't know the exact count, and I'm not gonna ask Kathy, but I think we need to be more involved with our community. We really do. Because our committees, if you look at them on a list, a lot of them, people are on multiple committees, and we need more input into that. 
One of the pros that I enjoy this year, and I'd like to say that, the school is not going to ask for a budget increase. They have actually a surplus. But with that department, they decided not to turn it in to free cash like the other departments do. But that's between you and them, and I know that will be discussed later on. Our alternate fresh water project is moving forward. Uh, the select board has another meeting with South Hadley, and Mass DOT is really, really helping us. Um, we will be talking about an article later. They're willing to fork up $560,000 just to help us with that project itself. The last thing is Governor Baker's wish list. Every year, the legislators put things on Governor Baker's wish list to support the communities they represent. As time goes on, the governor crosses towns off and projects off. Well, here we are on the 10th of June and Granby's $4 million bond to do something with the West Street School is still on his desk. He has not crossed us off the list. And according to Senate Eric Lesser, at this point, no news is good news. So hopefully Governor Baker will come to us with that. Before I call on the other townspeople to present their presentations, it's now time for the special town meeting. So I now will ask for a motion to recess the annual town meeting and to call the, into order the special town meeting. So can I have a second? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All opposed? Great, so now a quorum being present, the special town meeting will now come to order. Madam Clerk, has the warrant been properly posted as required by the general laws of the town of Granby? So now the moderator will recognize Chief Mitchell to, is it? Mr. Joyce to present the motion under Article 1. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from the snow and ice expenses the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of funding the selectman's expense budget for FY 2019. That's okay. Can I have a second? Is there any discussion? I'll let Jay speak first. The reason we're transferring this money is, as I stated, the Route 202 project is moving forward. We're on Mass DOT's timetable. We have to do the drawings so they can put it out for their bid. And again, the $50,000 we're putting in towards the drawing, they're putting in $560,000 towards everything from asphalt paving to police, men out there, control traffic and everything like that. They're doing all the surveying. They're doing all that except putting the pipes in. So for us to update their drawings to include the pipes will cost us $50,000. In return, they're going to give work for us for $560,000. Thank you. Yep. Is there any further discussion? Come on up. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. Jay, shouldn't this amount be transferred into a specific line item on the selectman's budget? It just says you want to transfer it to the selectman's expense budget. That's a, just a general term. Because of the timetable, Rich, we had to already use the money from our budget to meet Mass DOT schedule. So that's why we're transferring it, because we already used our money. Yes, 
because we have to meet their timetable. Now, if I'm talking too loud, I apologize. I'm deaf in one ear and I can't hear out of the other one. So I apologize for that, but I do talk loud. Joe Fernio, 154 Taylor Street. Jay, so, uh, so this is going to go into this year's budget as I understand it, but what is the total cost of the project projected to be? When I do the report from the Economic Development and Growth Committee, I have that broken down in all the different figures, and I'll put it to you then. Okay, Joe? Any further questions or comments? In order for the motion to pass under Article 1, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Joyce to present the motion under Article 2. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from public buildings expenses the sum of $30,000 for the purpose of funding the legal expense budget for FY 2019. Second. And discussion? As you probably know, either through the media or word of mouth, the town has had a lot of legal expenses this past year, whether it's the Bowen Gun Club or the investigation of the fire department earlier. The legal fund that we had allocated has been exceeded. So there are some money left in the public buildings expense fund, so we're gonna transfer it from there over to the legal fund so we can pay the bills. Any further discussion? In order for the motion to pass under Article 2, it must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. I need that Thank you. The moderator will now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 3. Bless you. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from the Snow and Ice Personal Services the sum of $8,000 for the purpose of funding the Cemetery Personal Service Budget for fiscal year 2019. Second, and discussion? This money is being transferred to assist them with um, some over costs and needs for the cemetery. Any questions or comments? This motion must pass by majority. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call in Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 4. Madam Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Bear with me, I don't have my glasses. I move the town vote to transfer My apologies. I move the town vote to transfer from the snow and ice personal services the sum of $28,000 for the purpose of funding the fire department personnel services budget for 2019. Is there any discussion? This has been an unprecedented year for the Granby Fire Department staff. 
we say goodbye to one of our full-timers who took an advanced position with the town of Southwick as their assistant chief. As part of his departure, Granby needed to pay out his accrued vacation a comp time. The greatest challenges we faced came from members of the department who were out for extended periods. At one point, we had three of our five full-time members out at the same time. In the interest of maintaining their privacy and not divulging personal information, one had military obligations, one was out on paternity leave, and two were out due to medical conditions that occurred outside the workplace. This created the need to fill shifts with overtime. When other full-timers were not available, the shifts were filled with call and per diem staff to ensure that we had adequate coverage for our community. These costs were unanticipated but necessary in the interest of public safety. Are there any questions or comments? This motion must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 5. Madam Moderator, move the town vote to transfer from ambulance retained earnings the sum of $40,000 for the purpose of funding the Ambulance Department Personnel Services Budget for fiscal year 19. Can I have a second? Thank you. Essentially, it's the same exact speech I just gave for uh, the uh, fire department. It was due to the uh, personnel issues with people being out for extended periods. Are there any questions? This motion must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. Oh, sure. Thank you. The moderator now calls for a motion to dissolve the special town meeting and call to order the annual town meeting. Can I have a second? All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? So now the annual town meeting will resu resume. And I will call up to the podium John LeBaire of the Finance Committee. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Libero, representing the Finance Committee. We once again have good news for the next fiscal year. The proposed budget is balanced for fiscal year 2020. The details are in our written report, but there is one point I'd like to call to your attention. After three years of decreases in state aid, we actually have an increase in state aid for fiscal year 2020. State aid is still not as high as it was 10 years ago, but we welcome any increase we are given. The Finance Committee continues to look toward the future. In this annual report to the town, we would like to share with you some concerns about the extended financial outlook for Granby. The Finance Committee has three things in mind in considering the future of the town. First, Granby has a small population and depends heavily on residential taxation for its income. There is almost no non-residential tax base to share the burden. Like any small town, Granby lacks the potential benefits that come with economies of scale. Average housing values are modest and tax rates are high. So income from residential taxation is self-limited. Choices around provision of civic services will always be difficult, usually involving the options of increasing taxation or decreasing levels of service. 
Next, education is the largest expenditure category for any small town. This spring, there have been a number of joint meetings involving the select board, the school committee, and the finance committee. Information has been made available for all to consider, and all these parties have ideas to contribute and have had opportunities to learn from the contributions of others. It is critical for the future of Granby that a common understanding of the issues leads to workable solutions for the operational and financial problems associated with the education of Granby students. Finally, a new significant issue may be emerging, the availability of potable water for portions of the town. Some studies have been completed and other studies have started. Initial steps have been taken. Potential solutions are being explored and additional steps, including grant applications to address the issues, are in the planning stages. Difficulties associated with rising groundwater and stormwater amounts cannot be ignored. In conclusion, Granby is on a sound financial footing for another year. Relatively high tax rates and a conservative fiscal approach are working for the short term. Small fluctuations in financial demand should not impose a problem, but the emergence of major financial issues would certainly be accompanied by wrenching decisions of the tax versus service variety. Uh, one last thing that say in our official capacity for the Finance Committee, uh, we in fact recommend to you all the articles as they are written, all the financial articles as they are written uh, for tonight's meeting. Thank you very much. In case you're wondering what I'm doing up here with my phone, I'm actually timing the speakers because I've limited them to the amount of time that they can speak in the interest of time, so that is why I'm taking my phone back and forth. The moderator will now call on Mr. Everin to present his report. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Good evening, everyone. My name is Emery Evren, and I have the pleasure of speaking on behalf of our school committee. Uh, we are about to complete another eventful and successful year at our Granby Public Schools. Tonight, I will primarily focus on our budget for fiscal year 2020. Our fiscal year 2020 school budget balances our two biggest commitments. One is our commitment to our students to ensure that they receive an enriching education in Granby and that they are all well prepared as they move on to their next chapter in their journey. Our other commitment is to our community that our budget will reflect the most efficient and cost effective way of funding the needs of our students in our schools. This evening, the school committee is happy to present a budget that balances those commitments. In this budget, we accomplish a few things. One, we keep the services provided in our schools the same as last year. Two, our budget is aligned with our objectives in our strategic plan. Three, there are no budget-related reductions to any positions. And finally, and probably most importantly, we will not be requesting any additional funding from the town meeting this evening. In fact, the fiscal year 20 budget is 3% or about $240,000 less than our fiscal year 19 budget. So what are the factors impacting our budget? On the revenue side, one big factor still remains to be state funding. During the last many years, we discussed the fact that the state funding for education has been and continues to be insufficient, especially for small and semi-rural school districts such as Granby. 
This past year, we have seen promising improvements in the way state is looking at education funding. It's not the end of the problem, but things are improving. As a result, we have about $150,000 more in our net school spending. As you know, the primary driver of our revenue is enrollment. This was the first time in eight years that we started the school year with more enrolled students than the previous year. We have over 30 additional students in our schools now. As our enrollment is stabilizing, we are encouraged to see an increased number of resident students. Also encouraging is the fact that we are seeing many students return to our district from private and charter schools as well as, as, well as their school choice assignments in other districts. We are in a better place than we were in the past. How do we look at managing the cost for our budget? Our finance director started this process back in September and October, working very closely with our administrative team. They built uh, initial drafts of the budget and then refined it based on two key factors. How are these, uh, how are these budgets affecting our services that we're offering? And how do we achieve what we set out to do in our strategic plan? So when there is a position that is vacant, our administrative team asks two questions to start with. Do we need to fill that position immediately? And if yes, how do we fill it? Can it be repurposed to align with the curriculum or program changes that we put in place? This year, there was a reduction of over $110,000 in salaries as a result of some vacant positions not being filled and the new salary schedule that we agreed to with our teachers union. Our social emotional learning program continues to be one of the most successful in our region. As a result, we are able to address the needs of our students uh, in our schools instead of placing them out of the district. We are adding a social emotional learning classroom in the elementary school to provide, provide high quality support to our students within our own district. Overall, for this budget cycle, that is the FY20, the social emotional learning program is projected to save over $130,000 for the district by avoiding costs. We are also diligently tracking programs where costs have been fluctuating historically, such as the food services program or the lunch program. We have been closely monitoring the food services program and I'm happy to share with you that we are currently tracking to break even on that program at the end of this current fiscal year. Our administrators are continuously looking for creative and cost-effective ways to introduce new programs and improve our offerings. Here are some examples. We received a grant from WPI to offer computer science for eighth and seventh grades. We partnered with Boston University through one of their programs to offer online AP physics. We recently received a grant, a competitive grant, that will help as we expand our mindfulness program uh, to grades seven through 12. What are the additions to this budget related to the strategic plan that we're talking about? There are key items that we're adding. Uh, and the reason why we're adding these items is to provide the opportunities of 21st century learning in our school district. The first one is related to technology. We are going to offer one-to-one -one, one -one technology for seventh and eighth grade, and then we'll offer subject level technology for the remaining of the high school. I also would like to remind everyone that in our elementary school uh, next door, we already have one-to-one -one technology. We are um, in the process of hiring, hiring a new curriculum and technology integration coordinator. Uh, this person will provide leadership in the ongoing development and improvement of the curriculum, instruction, and technology integration for our district. We will also add a data manager who will manage all databases, create reports that are required by the state, provide analysis to identify areas of strengths and opportunities. Aside from strong academics, our schools also offer a wide variety of athletic, curricular, and extracurricular activities that enrich the student's experience. Our mindfulness program, which already received great feedback, will expand to cover all grades. Our plan is to make the program self-sustaining after next year. 
We have approximately 100 student athletes in Granby High School. Many of them play multiple sports through the year. Approximately 170 students participate in clubs, student government, and other activities. In the case of clubs, the extracurricular activities are not athletic. Many students participate in more than one as well. Now to thank some of those folks who were involved in this process. First, many thanks to our superintendent and our school administrative team for their hard work to nurture every student in our district and to create a culture of trust and inclusiveness. Special thanks to our finance direct, uh, director, Adam Tarquini, for making such a difference since he joined us only a year ago. As we emphasized at every occasion, a community is stronger when its members come together to work on its challenges. So I would like to take a moment to thank our finance committee, our select board, and our town administrator for their collaboration and partnership. To be sure, there will be challenges ahead. What is different is the way we try to anticipate these challenges and how we proactively begin to look for creative and new ways to address them. And a final word for our community, all of you and the rest of our town. In the middle of our changes around us, what remains the same is our belief that our schools are at the heart of our community. We know this as we see many of you, in fact hundreds of you, in various school events, concerts, art shows, theatrical plays, and open houses. You attended games, cheered our fantastic teams. Many of you volunteered your time helping with school events, holding fundraiser for our athletic and music programs, collecting donations to raise a brand new scoreboard on our field in the back, or participating in school council or various work groups. So thank you all for being part of our community, and thank you for all your support for the Granby Public Schools. The moderator will now call on Mr. Joyce to speak on behalf of the Energy Committee and the Economic Development and Growth Committee, and then we'll move on to our motions. Okay, first, I wanna do the Economic Development and Growth Committee report, and you will not find this in your uh, booklet because this committee did not exist until this year. When I got elected, we created it. And the committee members is Brian Hofschild, Bill Porter, Jim Tromke, Gary Glenn, and myself. Currently, the committee has sent a list, a list of recommendations for business opportunities to the select board. The reason this committee does it that way is the select board has appointed this committee and we are responsible to them. The select board will look over the recommendations and then they will farm them out appropriately to whoever they see fit. In those recommendations includes business bylaw changes, land acquisitions, grant recommendations, such as the small town repair program or strap grant, and also the mass works grant. And to be clear, we've been very lucky with getting grants. We've worked very hard at it. But for people who don't understand it, every grant is competitive. If it's a state grant, we're competing with all 351 cities and towns in the state. So not only do you want your piece of the pie, you have to show a definite need and you have to justify it at 100%. Whenever possible, versus asking you people for money for a study for this justification, we use a Municipal Energy Technical Assistance Grant, which the state offices. We're currently using three of them right now to gather the data versus asking you for money so we can move on. One of the big projects, as stated, is the fresh water, the alternate fresh water supply coming up Route 202. On the 17th of April, we submitted a grant application to the state for $1,943,328.50. The grant maxed out at $2 million, and that's all we could squeeze in through justification. That will do the work 
on, they'll do the studies on phases one, two, and three in the permitting, but it will also complete the work on phase one, and if you don't remember, that's from the self Hadley line through five corners, that's phase one. Phase two links five corners up with Morgan Street pipe, and phase three links up Morgan Street with the um, E Street New Ludlow pipe coming in from the Coabana Reservoir. Granby is required under these grants to match 25%. And I said our application was 1,900,000 plus. But we're also allowed to use in-kind funds. So if everything goes according to plan, the town will be responsible for $700,543.60. But because we're allowed to use in-kind money, and that's where I said the $560,000 from MassDOT comes into play, the town's responsible for the, almost, the one, almost $2 million would be $140,543. So we've done the best we could with that. And with any project, we have to have a project manager, manager contract administrator, and civil engineer. Our civil engineer is Dave DeRocher. Our contract administrator is Chris Martin. And the project manager is me. Granby anticipates that this will be completed in the spring of FY20, at least up to High Street. Again, we're on mass DOT schedule, so depending what the legislator does with the budget on how far they go, but we're ready to go all the way through five corners. I had a meeting with Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito and the Energy, Environmental and Affairs Secretary Kathleen and I can't pronounce her last name, so I just call her Climate Katie. And in turn, she calls me the persistent pest because I'm always asking something for you guys. Uh, and they're going to let us combine grants. Like some of the grants we only get are $5,000, $10,000, $50,000. Well, if we can show a reason to combine them for a like thing, as long as we notify them in advance, they're going to let us combine them. They're going to let us use the in-kind funds like they did for MassDOT. And I think that's a big benefit, and I tip my hat to both of those individuals as well. And as I stated before, the, we have the $4 million bond for the West Street location. The decision we made by 30 June, so we only have 20 more days to wait to find if we're in, and we're hoping we are. And if anybody wants to check, that's Bill Chapter 113, Acts of 2018, Section 2B, Article 1100 through 3005. The total amount of legislators that put in for that called Governor's Wish List was $326 million. The state can't afford all that, but at least we're still in the running for our $4 million. That's your economic development. Did I get it under? Okay, I'm going to move on to the Energy Committee since uh, I beat the uh, egg clock timer here. The Energy Committee consists of Robert and Lillian Camus, Lenny Havlick, and Mark Vincelet, and myself. Again, grants are the most important that we're looking at, and again, they're all competitive, so we have to do that. On the Green Community Grant, which is located all your information for last year in the Energy Committee is on page 12 of your orange booklet, if you want to go over that. And I'm not going to go over that. I'm going to give you the highlights that we've done since then. When we got the $248,000 grant, we had a payback time of 6.16 years. So basically, we improved the governor's uh, energy renewable budget greatly and that's why we got awarded it. Unfortunately, for the FY19 Green Community Grant, I'm really not that hopeful for it. We did put in for about 250,000, but the payback on this one is only in the neighborhood of 15 years because what we needed was more short-term payback items 
like the Energy Committee wanted to do the LED lights in the school system, uh, particularly the junior, senior high school, because we all know the new school has new lights. And we requested the information from the school, but we didn't unfortunately get it, and we still haven't got it. So we couldn't use any of those lights for the junior, senior high school. Within our auditing of it, there's a couple things. We did notice that the school had already purchased over $50,000 of LED lights. Well, to the school's credit, they wrote a corrective action plan that says they will not do that again because they did not go through the capitalization committee and there was no article to purchase those lights. You have to ask them where the money came from. I have no idea, but they're the ones to answer that question. But to their credit, they wrote a corrective action plan, so we were still able to submit this year's Green Community Grant, otherwise we couldn't have. If they had waited for us to do it, we could have replaced all those lights at no charge. Other building capital improvements we've noticed going around the school and other places, and I'm just gonna put this out there blank so everybody knows about it, a Granby bylaw is a requirement. If you violate a Granby bylaw, you can be fined up to $300 per day to correct it, and it'll go on your record as a misdemeanor. So please, nobody violate any Granby bylaws. We do have bylaws, how to spend money, how to acquire money, and it should be followed by everybody. Uh, along with that, I've already mentioned that we're going forward with the Granby Municipal um, Electric Company. We have a grant for that. The study's being conducted right now. And as if you noticed in Granby, all our lights are all now LED on the streets. That'll save us two-thirds energy for all those lights, which will be a cost savings for everybody. And currently we have two more grants in Boston. We're waiting for them to be resolved. One of them is for the um, safety complex. We're looking at putting a solar on the fire department side of the roof along with battery storage so we could decrease the amount of energy that we pay for and the fossil fuel usage in that building. Did I do good? Do I ask questions or we just keep it? Okay. Thank you, Jay. The moderator will now call on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 12. got my glasses this time. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to appropriate as offset receipts fire permit fees in the amount of $1,640 for forest fire warden expense. Second, any discussion or questions? All right, first Chief Mitchell and then I'll have you step up. These funds represent monies collected for fees from open burning permits. The money from these fees goes directly back into the fire department specifically for the use in purchasing or maintaining of equipment for brush and wildland firefighting. This may include appropriate firefighting protective gear, tools, pumps, hose, or repair and maintenance of said items. Questions? Come on up. Uh, how much would this... Um, Can I have your name and address, please? Uh, Seamus Connolly, 21 Ferry Hill Road, Granby, Mass. My question is, what would, be the, uh, what would be the cost to us? Would it cost us anything with our taxes, or would it go... Uh, no, Seamus, this is uh, money that's already collected uh, for open burning fees, so it's money that's there just to be moved to an appropriate location. Okay, I just, th that's what I thought. I have a comment. For, you know, for the town safety, I would say vote on this because if there can be a forest fire in Siberia or Canada as of last year, 
It could happen in Granby. So I would say vote on this on Article 12. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Mr. DeRosier to present the motion under Article 13. I move the town vote to transfer from available funds the sum of $278,714 authorized under Chapter 291 of the Acts of 2004 for highway construction and improvements defined under Chapter 90 of the general laws. Thank you. Can I have a second and opening up for discussion? Yeah, sure. All right. This is just the uh, normal funds we get every year from the state. We have to opt or approve it at town meeting for, for the highway department to be able to spend the money. Come on forward. Do you have a question? Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street, for Dave. So what streets are going to be repaired uh, under these funds? Yeah. There's several on the wish list right now. The first one uh, we're doing with local funds, which would be Morgan Street between New Ludlow and uh, the Air Force Base. The next on the agenda is probably going to be uh, Bachelor Street from Harris to North and Lyman Street, which will be another project. And the third on the agenda is going to be sections of Taylor Street uh, down by your house, Joe. Any further discussion? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Ms. Silva to present the motion under Article 14. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate 175000 for the purpose of funding the town's other post-employment benefits, OPEB liability. Can I have a second? Opening up for discussion. So this is the annual appropriation to fund the town's OPEB liability. Per the fiscal year 2018 audit report, the town OPEB liability as of June 30th, 2018 is $21,950,058. Additionally, the 2018 actuarial report has stated that to fully fund this liability over a 30-year period, the town should be appropriating $1,810,093 annually. So we're clearly not doing that. Thank you. I need this. Any questions? Come on forward. Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. Jennifer, in last year's financial report on the consolidated balance sheet, it says OPEB liability of 25 million. So it says 25 million whatever and change. So does that mean that we funded four of the 25 million and we have 21 million to go that we need to fund? And the last part of this is I'm not sure what the benefits are in which town employees they go to. I'm going to pass that off to Chris. Okay, Joe, every three years we have to go through an actuarial revaluation of what our potential uh, liability is going to be. We had to do that during fiscal year 2018. So based upon the number of people who are currently enrolled, their ages, all the other factors that go into it, how much we funded, what our rate of return is, that liability, that liability has reduced from the 24 million down to the 22 million, okay? The benefits that are covered under this are health, life, 
and any other benefit that the town pays towards for any of those type of coverages. Uh, that's which town employees, teachers, that's everybody? That's everybody. That's anybody who is eligible to participate plus their spouses if they're eligible on both the town and the school site. Okay, my last part of the question is so what's our strategy to get to 1.8 million a year to reduce this liability because that $175,000 there's there's no chance. And I think then, what's going to happen, Joe, is at some point the legislature is going to have to address this. We, ours is 21 million for a town our size. The state is billions yeah. for their unfunded liability. And I believe at some point, just like for the unfunded retirement liability, they are going to create a funding schedule that the various towns are going to have to follow. Okay, thank you. Come on up. Abelson 134 Cold Hill. Uh, just for fun, uh, what interest rate are we paying and what would be the total liability at the end of 30 years? If it's billions for the whole state and it's 20 plus million for us now, what are we looking at? Dr. Abelson, before you, Dr. Abelson, before you walk away, I just want to make sure I'm answering the question that you're truly asking, okay? Yep. You asked about an interest rate. Is it yes. the amount that we're earning or the amount we're not paying any interest. Right. What are we being charged? We're not being charged anything for interest. Basically what it is is they look at the mortality tables, they look at the age factors. That's how they determine what our potential liability is going to be based upon when we're going to die. <laughs> okay? So that is done every three years. So if we have an aging population for employees on this, that liability will reduce because we're not going to be paying as much. However, if we're going to live longer, the mortality tables extend out, that will change also. Right now, as I, as I said, the current liability, which will be on the 30-year period, is the 21950000 Okay, That's the total liability. That okay. is projected. Yes, and what we'll end up doing is paying that down with our 175000 a year, which is a mere pittance, but at some point we will be fully funding that. Since I'm now on the Board of Health and looking to improve the health of Granby, not to uh, <laughs> decrease the health of Granby, yeah. So we can look for a higher unfunded liability. I, I'm sure it's going to go up. Any other questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now call on Mr. Leonard to present the motion under Article 15. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, first of all, my two takeaways from tonight are is that my Bachelor Street property is going to be paved and I'm going to die. <laughs> so anything else is a bonus. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the $9,000 for the purpose of funding the revaluation of town property. Second, and discussion? By virtue of explanation, uh, this is a mandatory revaluation that the state requires of us every six years, and it's not part of our regular annual budget, which is why we have to appropriate it separately. Come on up.
Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. Can you tell me, are, we hire, are you hiring an outside firm to do this? Is the assessors doing it? Are they going out to everybody's home to reevaluate their home? Rich, uh, this is a supplemental uh, revaluation program that the state mandates in addition to our regular cyclical inspections. Uh, this is all driven by the state DOR. Who is doing it? An outside firm? An outside firm. And are they actually going to each property? They will, in conjunction with the Board of Assessors, take a sampling of all of our properties and then submit them to the state. And then we will go back and forth with the state until the state is happy with our property values. So the state and the assessors will take a sample of yes. homes? Yes. And then it's, it's basically the state's way of proving our values. Okay. Now, they use comparable sales, I assume? Yes. Okay. Thanks. When am I going to die? Any further questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The moderator now calls on Mr. Nally to present the motion under Article 16. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Steve Nally, 31 Pleasant Street. I'm the treasurer for the town. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $52,000 for the purpose of funding the demolition of a tax foreclosure structure. Second, and discussion. Uh, this property was uh, taken to tax ta taking a number of years ago by the collector. Uh, we have finally redeemed, uh, reduced to uh, judgment at uh, land court. Uh, the town has foreclosed on the property. Unfortunately, the property has been abandoned for a number of years and is uh, presenting a liability to the town. And secondly, uh, demolishing the structure will improve the property value so that we can sell it at a tax title auction. Any questions? Come on up. Thank you. David LaPlante, 341 Bachelor Street. Why don't you just sell the property instead of wasting 52000 Did you hear that? I did not. Can you say that again? Because we're getting feedback up here. Why don't you just sell the property instead of wasting $50,000? Uh, it's our, our opinion that um, if we were to go to tax title auction now, we would not even get uh, what was owed on the property, which is about $28,000. Uh, so by investing the the money in the demolition eliminates the liability to the town and increases the property value. Any further questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion, motion passes by majority. The moderator calls on Mr. Nally to present the motion under Article 17. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of funding the cost of bond council printing and issuance costs for the water main project. Thank you. Second, and discussion? Uh, you may recall uh, at one of these special town meetings, you voted to um, uh, bond to install a uh, water main project up from the town of South Hadley line to Five Corners. We can't hear. I'm sorry. She can't hear. Okay. Uh, earlier this year, we had a special town meeting to uh, uh, authorize the installation of a water main from South Hadley to Five Corners. Uh, what was uh, missing in that uh, appropriation was the cost of issuance for the bond. Any questions? Come on forward. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. I didn't catch the last part of your sentence. Did you say this was left off the uh, costs? 
when the costs were determined for the cost of the project, our cost of the project for the water main, the issuance costs for the bond were not included in, the, in that estimate. Okay, now Jay keeps talking about being, being reimbursed for these expenses. Will, we, will we, we be reimbursed for these? Do you know the answer? No. Jay, can you come up here? Okay, to create a bond, they want so much money. Right. And for the 1.2 million, they want $100,000 to do it. Now, if the people of the town, after they see we do a successful job on phase one, want to fund us more than one phase at a time, then, like Steve would be up here asking for the bond money, but we get a lot more out of it, if you know what I'm trying to say. Every time you go for a bond, you've got to pay a set fee. Okay, we won't get reimbursed for that. No, no. Okay. That's the cost of doing business with them. Any further questions? This is a majority, so all those in favor, please raise your card. Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Nally to present the motion under Article 18. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I move the town vote to raise an appropriate this one, uh, excuse me, $10,000 for the purpose of funding any and all costs associated with the foreclosure or collection of taxes owed on property placed in tax title in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 60. Second, and discussion. Madam Moderator, uh, every few years uh, the Treasurer's Office uh, goes to a uh, town meeting for appropriation to cover legal expenses for the disposition of tax title properties. Uh, this is just replenishing that fund. Any questions? This must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The moderator will now call in Mr. DeRosier to present the motion under Article 19. I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $200,000 for the purpose of funding, inspection, repair, and or replacement of the town's stormwater system. Second, and discussion? Basically, there's uh, a number of areas in town. The storm, storm drain system is getting old. We've had a sinkhole on High Street. Um, we did some camera work on that. At least one line has to be replaced there. Several lines were cameraed on East Street. Several. Uh, of those lines are getting old, damaged, corrosion, and need to be replaced. And we, we plan on starting to replace some of those before they create a problem and create further sinkholes all over town. Any questions or discussion? This motion, you have a question? Come on up. Just an aside with our water project, should we not be doing storm drains up 202 or wherever we're going? 202 is the state's responsibility, so they'll be handling all of their work. Um, this, is, this is for our work on our, our, our roads. Any other questions or comments? In order for this motion to pass, it must be a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call Ms. Bardos to present the motion under Article 20.
Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $35,930 for the purpose of funding the tuition for Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School students. Can I have a second? And discussion. This is for two students that will be attending Smith Voc, um, taking programs that are not offered at Pathfinder. One is criminal justice and the other is the plumbing program. Under Mass General Law, Chapter 74, it requires that the town pays for these students. Any questions or comments? Come on forward. Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. Uh, I didn't know that they offered criminal justice in high school. So I'm just, that's news to me. I guess it's a special program up there or something. I'm assuming these are high school age students. Joe, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, we did not know that either. Uh, and in fact, our superintendent has some conversations. We try to uh, push back on that, but the state approved it. And they told us that we have to send the student for a criminal justice program. Uh, that was part of the conversation that we had. Any other questions? In order for this to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Ms. Bartos to present the motion under Article 21. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $21,500 for the purpose of funding the purchase of maintenance equipment for the Granby Public Schools. Okay. Second, and discussion. This is to purchase a zero-turn lawnmower and a sander for the use for equipment for the schools since the agreement of shared services has ended with the town. Any questions? Come on forward. And then you. OK. Um, Seamus Connolly, 21 Ferrier Road, Granby, Mass. My question is, um, well, you know, well, actually, I just have a comment. I would say for the good of our students, the good of our, you know, you know what I mean, for the safety of everyone that includes adults, children, and, you know, and people walking here for events, that a sander is needed and these equipment is needed. Because if somebody gets injured, it is on the town of Granby. Not, you know what I mean, not just on the school, not on the janitors, it's all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Come on forward. You can be next, Mr. Randall. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. Can you tell me if this amount was approved by the Capital Needs Committee? I mean, all capital purchases are supposed to be approved by them. The individual items cost less than $25,000, which is the threshold for it to go to the capital planning. Okay, I thought it was less than that, but thank you. George Randall, 52 Taylor Street. I'd like an explanation as to why the shared services have stopped. Yeah, it was a good program that's worked for far back as I can recall.
George, there you are. <laughs> the program's only been going, it was a trial program we, were, we tried out, and it's been going for four years. After this four year period, what we found is that both sides felt that we weren't getting our fair share of the services that are going on. So that's why we decided to go back to the way we were doing things before we did the shared services on custodial and maintenance. Okay, we do share other things, but it's just the custodial maintenance portion that we turned around and decided that it wasn't working out as we had hoped for. So therefore, we terminated the agreement to have just those shared services. Everything else is working out the same way. Any further questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Chief Wishart to present the motion under Article 22. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash $44,904 for the purpose of funding a pur the purchase of a marked cruiser for the police department. Second, and now discussion. This is the one cruiser that, that come up every year and we try to replace one cruiser every year. Um, it would be re replacing a 2015 um, SUV that has 115,000 miles on it. That will be traded in. Any questions? This motion must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Mr. DeRosier to present the motion under Article 23. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash $227,000 for the purpose of funding a purchase of a dump truck for the highway department. Can I have a second? And discussion. Yes, we have three trucks that are in this vintage around 2000, 2001. They're just getting old. We deal with corrosive materials. Um, we're constantly fixing these things. Some of even the newer trucks, we've had holes that you can stick your hand through. We have to constantly weld and fix. There's about a limit what we can do with the repairs. Uh, but a lot of this money is not only the truck itself, but it's the sanding equipment that goes with it. And we've been trying to go with a stainless body. That's why the costs are up a little bit. Any questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Mr. DeRosier to present the motion under Article 24. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash 102000 for the purpose of funding the purchase of a mini excavator for the highway department. Second, and discussion. What we're doing with this is to uh, clean the catch basins basically as a primary duty, but a secondary function of this would also be a boom mower. We're gonna put on uh, our boom mowers, mowers over 20 years old, that's getting tired. This is a multi-purpose tool that's gonna help us clean catch basins a little bit more efficiently than with the vac truck. Um, I just couldn't justify coming in front of you and asking for $390,000 for a new vac truck um, that's what they go for these days. Um, the mini excavator, we're using um, an orange peel grapple. It's a lower maintenance cost to clean catch basins and it actually does it quite efficiently. We had one on rent uh, for about a month and a half or two months already. We've cleaned 400 basins. We're on track to clean over 600 basins this year. Any questions or comments? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. 
The moderator now call on Mr. DeRozier to present the motion under Article 25. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash 69000 for the purpose of funding the purchase of a one-ton dump truck for the highway department. Second. And discussion? This is replacing a 1993 vehicle. Uh, we've done a lot of repairs on this vehicle. We just had to replace the transmission. We put a junkyard transmission in it this time because we didn't want to put a, put a lot of money in knowing that we are coming to replace the truck. We've already changed the engine on it once. It's just one thing after another. It's time. Uh, it's just getting old. Any questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 26. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash $700,000 for the purpose of funding the purpose of a pumper tanker truck for the fire department. Second, and discussion? Okay. How long firefighters can initially fight a fire while waiting for established water supply is directly related to the amount of water carried on the first arriving engine. Granby faces three particular challenges when responding to fires and other emergencies. Staffing. Being a small bedroom community, we have a small full-time force that supports our larger call force. We cannot predict how many people will be responding on an initial alarm. During the day, we may typically respond with two firefighters and at times myself to start fighting fire. It is the amount of water on the first responding apparatus that may stand between effecting a rescue or saving a house until additional help arrives. Evenings are a completely different story. Water. For Granby, we have two small areas of town that offer the use of a fire hydrant for water supply of fire apparatus. The remainder of the town requires that we bring water and supply by other means, such as shuttling it from other locations. Still, we need to access water through water ponds, streams, or other sources to refill the tankers used to shuttle the water to an incident. We do have another number of water points identified many years ago located throughout the town. Some of these points have had the installation of PVC piping that we can hook up to and draft from. However, these pipes were placed many years ago. The PVC pipes have been exposed to weather and UV sunlight, which is degraded and made many brittle and fragile. Maintaining these access points has proven difficult with small regular staff and limited time availability of call members to help, not to mention other challenges. There are water access areas that often transform over time as a result of environmental changes, for instance, through drought conditions. Some locations are not reliable and can no longer be used. Accessibility to some locations have changed as access has become overgrown with vegetation or blocked by barriers if they are on private property. Equipment. Presently, Engine 1, our oldest frontline apparatus, is 25 years old. It has 23,843 miles on the odometer. That may not sound like a lot, but consider this. It has 4,215 hours of engine use. That equates to about 5.6 miles driven for every hour on engine use. Fire apparatus are designed and intended to sit idle for long periods of time to run pumps and various equipment. Engine 1 recently had its yearly preventative maintenance performed. Though it passed, leaks were found coming from a valve housing cover and had to be replaced. Shortly after the preventative maintenance, the apparatus was required at an incident and failed to start. Unacceptable during an emergency situation. It was found that the onboard charging unit had failed and needed to be replaced. More critical, 
it has been found that the water tank for the apparatus is significantly deteriorating and is in jeopardy of failing. This is not an easy repair and will be costly to fix. Speaking of money, I was asked if we could just simply refurbish the truck and get a few more time, uh, a little bit more years out of engine one. I took the time and considered this, looked at the potential expense needed to refurbish the engine and to bring it up to par with the NFPA standards. I believe we'd be spending considerably more than what we would get back and still need to purchase a large full-size engine within the short foreseeable future. As for refurbishing, this does not mean renewing. Even refurbished, a 25-year-old truck will still have 25-year-old parts in it. I question whether or not we'd be throwing good money after bad. Simply refurbing an apparatus will not create a new fire truck free of other future repairs or unforeseen issues. Our best chance to effect a rescue or extinguish a fire comes in the ability to conduct an aggressive fire attack upon arrival, or at least establish the ability to protect exposures in advanced fire situations uh, while we wait for water supply and other resources to arrive. This requires us to rely strictly on the amount of water we bring initially with the first arriving apparatus. This proposed pumper tanker will carry up to 2,500 gallons of water, enabling us to have a continuous firefighting operation more than two and a half times longer than we presently can with our first two engine. When we worked on the specifications necessary for this apparatus, we concentrated strictly on the needs to serve the community and safety of fire personnel. We steered away from the frills and niceties that many firefighters would want. Fire apparatus are not cheap. We added only the things we believe would have the greatest impact on the mission of the department and the expectations we would have of the apparatus while keeping firefighter safety at the top of our list. I know for some, this is an emotionally charged topic. Understand, this is not gonna be my fire truck. I'm not standing here promoting this truck for me. It is for you, the residents of Granby. This will be Granby's fire truck the citizen's fire truck. The apparatus, excuse me, please consider this motion not with emotion, but with logic and critical thinking. This apparatus is what is right and appropriate for Granby and a tool needed for the firefighters to perform the vital and dangerous task of protecting the residents, homes, and businesses of this great community. Uh, come on forward, Mr. Randall, and then Doctor, and then Mr. Connolly. George Randall, <clears throat> 52 Taylor. Uh, Chief Mitchell and I have gone back and forth on uh, purchase of vehicles in the past. And I relayed my comments to him regarding that this vehicle, uh, that I support him 100%. Uh, and I urge the town meeting action this evening, not spend a whole lot of time on discussion, but to approve this, uh, this article. Thank you. Thank you. Abelson, 134 Cold Hill. Uh, the motion reads, a pumper truck. You read a pumper tanker truck. Are they the same thing? Uh, yeah, call it a Freudian slip. I've been saying pumper tanker for so long because that's essentially what it is. It's the same exact thing. There's, there's no difference. The only difference is this, this truck is going to carry more water than their current frontline pieces. Come on forward. Oh. Seamus Connolly, 21 Fair Hill Road, Granby. I 100% agree with Chief Mitchell's proposal. It is for the safety of our citizens, our police department, which is right next, and the school, 
the, the Duframes Park area. If there's a fire in your home, you know, and this tank or thing that he just discussed is not put into place, people's lives are at risk. You put some, you know what I mean, you can't put a price of money on somebody's lives, whether it's a senior citizen or any human being. I 100% support this and think with your conscience and think logically. Thank you, and God bless Granby, Massachusetts. Thank you. Joe Ferdy at 154 Taylor Street. Uh, a few minutes ago when you described the new pumper, you said it would pump water two and a half times longer based on a 2,500 gallon tank. So in reality, if you get to a fire and you got a 2,500 gallon tank, how long can you pump till you run out of water? So the reality is that is a difficult question to answer because it is based on what we find on arrival. With uh, a typical attack line, smaller line, we may be able to get five, six, seven minutes. If we get to a scene and it's a larger fire, we're gonna go in with a larger hose. Obviously, we're gonna be using more water. So it's really situationally based, but everything that we do, whether it's, it's our current apparatus and service or this apparatus, this truck would give us more time, two and a half more times more available uh, to get the fire out or hold it until we can get additional resources. Right, but uh, if there's a fire call, are there pumper trucks coming from other communities also, or, or is it we're stuck with that, then we run out of water, you gotta leave, you gotta go fill it, and then come back and fight the fire again? Okay, good, very good question, and thank you for asking it. Uh, we have what is essentially called run cards. It's a schedule of apparatus that respond based on what the call is. For an unconfirmed reported fire, we respond currently with um, engine one, tanker one, engine two, and myself. The reality is I may only get that one initial engine out the door because of our staffing issues. It's unpredictable to determine if we're even gonna get another piece out the door initially. So when that truck gets there, it needs to hold the line. If we go to a second alarm, that's when we're starting to see additional resources coming. Second alarms would be uh, announced for confirmed structure fires, or, and in what was in a recent case, uh, uh, one of the police dispatchers made an, an excellent judgment call and went right to a second alarm or requested that we go to a second alarm based on the information they were given. And, and that's just the working relationship we have. So I trusted their judgment, we went to a second alarm and we had apparatus responding from another community right there and then. But more times than not, we're just going with ours. Okay, so then just the last part of this is that because of our restricted ability to fight a fire because we have to go to ponds and bring our own water, um, do you know if our insurance rates on property are higher because of that? So the insurance ratings that you're speaking of uh, is the ISO, Insurance Safety Office, I believe it is. Uh, th they set the, the uh, rate of where we are on a scale from one to 10, and then they have subgroups, A's and B's. Uh, Granby, I believe, is a seven, if I remember correctly, uh, which, considering, isn't too bad, and, and it's because we have the apparatus that we do. Uh, the, the problem we're facing is the issues with accessibility to water now, and we are actually currently in the middle of an ISO rating audit. I don't think we're gonna go down. Uh, I think, if anything, we can only expect to go up what I will say is I have uh, uh, a vision and goal for Granby in the future that will significantly impact positively uh, how water is obtained and availability for the residents in, in hopes of reducing our, our uh, insurance ratings. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. Did you say the water 
from this new tanker would only last a couple minutes with a large hose? How long it's going to last is dependent on the size of the hose that we use. Right. Larger hose obviously is more water. You, you, you refer to a, using a large hose on a large fire would only last, you know, I think you said three or four minutes? It, again, it, it depends on which hose we grab. We can, with the, with the regular attack line, we can probably go uh, four or five minutes um, with the larger hose. It may be a little shorter, but consider the fact that if we went with only the 1,000 gallons that we currently have now, we're going to be out of water pretty quick. Okay, how many tanker trucks do we have right now? We have one tanker truck. One. And are we replacing that or adding to it? We, are we keeping the one we have now? Yes, that pump, that tanker is remaining. This piece is going to be intended to be our first do engine because it will carry the water needed in order to sustain an operation until additional resources get there. Okay, I just have, lastly, I just have a general question. Over the last 12 months, how many fire calls have you responded to? Just general terms. Okay, that's, that's hard to answer. Fire <laughs> calls, what we define as fire emergencies. Uh, well, whether it, there's a fire or not, you get a call, hey, I think there's a fire right. in my so, cellar. So we're looking at about uh, 268, I believe, was the last number that I looked at. Um, but how many fires have we had? Uh, confirmed, five. I, I don't have that exact number, but if, if I'm trying to do this off of memory, about five actual fires. Okay, thank you. Come on forward. Paula LaPete, um, 13 Ferry Hill Road. Um, I was just wondering, I know a year or two ago we ended up getting, was it a mini pumper? Um, so this would be in addition to, you, you would be using the mini pumper and this pumper for whatever calls you had to go on for a fire. Okay, so the, I don't want to confuse the issue of, of why we're here. The, the mini pumper itself has uh, its separate purposes. Um, so it's really not germane to uh, this truck. What I will say is that uh, we have identified instances where, because of access, the mini pumper would be used. But day to day for every call that we go on fire related, except for motor vehicle accidents. Essentially, this pumper tanker would be the first out. In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Joyce to present the motion under Article 27. <laughs> Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash $50,000 for the purpose of funding the purchase of a pickup truck for the Public Buildings Department. Second. And discussion. As you've heard tonight, there's two things going on. Number one, the school and the town are separating their maintenance departments. In addition to that, the town needs to take care of the parks. You people have sounded over and over again, you want to take care of the parks. That's what we're trying to do here. By purchasing this pickup truck, we are going to give the facilities people the new truck. We're going to take their old truck, which is older but still serviceable, and they can attach a trailer to it, and they can bring the lawn mowers, the weed whackers, whatever you want, over to Dufresne's, Brown Ellison, Cooley, any other park they need to be done. But if we don't have two trucks, the people can't be at two places at one time. Any questions? 
In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 28. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer the free, from free cash the sum of $134,714 for the purpose of funding the General Purpose Stabilization Fund. Second, and discussion. This is the annual uh, appropriation to transfer available free cash to Stabilization Fund. This is done uh, so these funds remain available for the funding source for the future appropriations as free cash will disappear uh, each uh, June 30th. It is not available again until recertified by the Department of Revenue. Are there any questions or discussion? Come on forward. Joe Fernio, 154 Taylor. So what is the warrant amount for not just 28, but 29 and 30 differ from the motion amount by $2,900? Joe, originally that was the amount in the warrant was the amount that was left in free cash after we had already projected out what we were going to spend. However, the school article was originally 32,000, I believe. If you take the difference between the 21.5 and the 32, we split that difference and put it into each one of those in addition to the original amount. Any further questions? Hi, Emory Evren, 18 Crescent Street. What is the total amount of free cash this year? From what I can see, Emory, I, I don't have my glasses on. One million six hundred twenty-nine thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars. Thank you. In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed. The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article Twenty-Nine. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $134,714 for the purpose of funding the Capital, capital Needs Stabilization Fund. Second, and discussion. This is the annual appropriation to transfer, transfer available free cash to Stabilization Fund. This is done for these funds can remain available fund funding source for the future appropriations of free cash will disappear June 30th, will not be available again until recertified by the Department of Revenue. Any questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, you opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 30. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $134,715 for the purpose of funding the Municipal Building Stabilization Fund. Second. And discussion? Uh, again, this is the annual appropriation to transfer available free cash to stabilization fund. This is done for these funds can remain available. Funding source for the future appropriations as free cash disappears each June 30th and is not available again until recertified by Department of Revenue. Any questions? 
In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now call on Ms. Silva to present the motion under Article 31. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $358,634 as its apportioned share of the fiscal year 2020 budget for the Pathfinder Regional Vocational Technical High School District. Second, and discussion. So this basically is the town share of the fiscal year 2020 Pathfinder budget. Any questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now call on Ms. Silva to present the motion under Article 32. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $415,050 to operate the Municipal Solid Waste Department. Wages, $5,000. Expenses, $410,050. And that $20,009 be raised from Municipal Solid Waste Receipts, $62,000 be raised from Retained Earnings, and $333.50. $333,041 be raised from tax levy. Second, discussion. So this is to fund the cost of the fiscal year 2020 curbside trash collection program and to fund the yard waste days and the bulky waste days. Any questions? In order for this to pass, it must pass by a majority. So all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by uh, unanimously. The moderator now call on Ms. Silva to present the motion. No. The motion under 33. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $235,107 to operate the sewer department. Wages, $10,560. Expenses, $164,797. And debt, $59,750. And that $222,807 be raised from sewer receipts and $12,300 be raised from retained earnings. Second, and discussion. This is to fund the operations of the sewer system for fiscal year 2020. Any questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now call on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 34. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $329,574 to operate the ambulance department. Wages, $199,100, expenses, $68,990, capital $7,300, and debt $54,184. And that $307,574 be raised from ambulance receipts and $22,000 be raised from retained earnings. Second, and discussion? This past year was the first year for the new budget layout, which split wages for EMS and fire. For fiscal year 18, the budget was $500,083. Last year, for the start of this new budget, we requested $305,277. This budget gave us a solid look at how we spend money. 
Generally speaking, we have found that we are pretty good at the placement of our funds. However, we also knew with this new budget uh, system, there would be some adjustments that needed to be made. As for our operating costs, we added money in some line items and removed from others. This was calculated using trends from the past budgets while forecasting needs for the department going forward. Operating costs increased by $1,830. Capital outlay costs appeared to be dead on, with the exception of needing an increase in one line item, uh, which brought the capital outlay increase to only $1,000 more. Fiscal year 19 gave us a better look at wages for our full-time call and per diem staff. As of last year, 75% of full-time wages was moved to the fire department budget. Additionally, we added a new position to the department to aid us in ensuring paramedic coverage on the evening shifts. Considering full-timers work a rotation based on an eight-day work week, four days on, four days off, half of our nights are covered with a full-time paramedic. The other four nights were intended to be covered by call and per diem staff. What this community lacks are an adequate supply of residents trained as paramedics to be on call. As such, we were required to rely more heavily on the use of per diem paramedics to ensure our ALS coverage. As a result, we again adjusted the budget by adding a line item for per diem staff to better track wages. Due to the greater reliance on per diem staff, we needed to increase the wages section to have the staff on shift to provide adequate ALS services for the residents. I'd like to point out that the department has made some significant changes over the last year that has improved the efficiency of the department. We started using a new software program for patient care reports. This program allows us to reduce significantly time spent at the hospital getting the ambulance back in town and in service to serve the public. This is already shown to reduce the reliance on the use of mutual aid, which will, affect in which will reflect in receipts to the town as we respond to more calls and handle our own business. Any questions or discussion? Come on forward. Joe 54, Joe Farnia, 154 Taylor Street. Um, I'm just curious as to the rate that we charge on the ambulance and what is our bad debt rate in terms of the services we provide? How much are we still trying to collect, let's say, in the, from unpaid services in the last year? Okay. Joe, before you leave, I, 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 sir, I, I just I want to clarify. Can, can you explain the first part of your question again? Yeah, basically what I wanted to understand was that what are the rates charged either to us, our insurance companies, Medicare, when we require a service? Because we either go to Holyoke or we go to Springfield. And are there varying rates depending on the type of service we provide? And then secondly, how is our collections related to the bills that are incurred from providing the service going in terms of our collection rate versus our bad debt rate? Okay, so as, as for what we charge as an EMS service for what we uh, provide, uh, we offer several different rates. Uh, a basic rate, which is for simple basic BLS service. I don't recall the amount off the top of my head. I know we did increase that uh, rate last year. Uh, we have two ALS rates that's based on the procedures that the paramedics perform on a patient. Based on those rates, we bill the insurance company or Medicare. Here's the reality. Insurance companies, we have less of an issue with, with private uh, insurance. The issue is Medicare. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to use some, some round numbers, but if you have a $2,500 EMS bill and it gets charged to Medicare, we may only see six, seven hundred dollars of that twenty-five hundred that's billed. That's Medicare, and we cannot bill the patient. That's that's law. Um, however, we we have been charged, or we have been sent bills when we can't provide a service, and we have had to call another agency to come in and provide ALS service. 
we're trying to reduce the instances of that and keep our ambulance in town to serve our residents. Any further questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. So all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator calls on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 35. I think you all are going to get sick of seeing me up here. Uh, Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from ambulance retained earnings $30,000 for the purpose of funding the purchase of a cardiac monitor. Second, and discussion. One of the most used pieces of medical equipment by paramedics is the cardiac monitor. Cardiac monitor essentially takes a picture of the heart and lets paramedics know how the pump of the body is working. As we often hear, heart disease is the number one cause of death amongst Americans today. This monitor helps paramedics determine if an illness or other medical emergency is related to a condition of the heart. The Granby Fire Department maintains two full sets of paramedic gear at all times. This includes our first in or medical bag, which carries general supplies and oxygen, a medications bag, and the cardiac monitor itself. One of the cardiac monitors currently in service is almost 20 years old. It is not compatible with the computer software used to write reports and incapable of transmitting EKG information through our current system in use. Simple terms, it's obsolete. If the primary monitor goes down due to the damage or needs software updates, we are left with a monitor that does not have the same capabilities and is used so infrequently a paramedic may lose some of the knowledge and skills necessary to operate this older monitor. This may lead to costly mistakes that can be avoided. It is in the best interest of patients as well as paramedics that the monitor in use, you know, monitors in use, uh, are of the same make and model to reduce the need to have set skills in too many pieces of equipment. We need to ensure that we are capable of providing the very best medical care we can. To do this, we need the right equipment that is capable of interfacing with our current computer systems as well as being able to send vital information to doctors to best determine appropriate care for those suffering medical emergencies. Any other questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. The moderator will now call on Mr. Libera to present item one under the Article 36. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, we're going to present, there are 41 items here. Uh, we're going to present them after the first one in groups of four, uh, read all four of the motions, and then you are free to ask questions about any one of the four that you want. All right, thank you. So, <clears throat> Article 36, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the expense of the town, including debt and interest for the ensuing year, and to carry out any vote passed under this article. Second. Okay. Item one, school department. Personal services, $6,427,458. Expenses, $1,247,354. No capital outlay. Total budget, $7,674,812. Second, and discussion? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, in, in many ways, this was the uh, smoothest process we've had in many years for the school budget. Um, there were uh, a total of 
14 people, 15 people involved directly in the discussions all year long. And uh, there's no point in saying that every idea that was passed was unanimous, but there was enough agreement among the three major groups and the town administrator uh, that uh, the budget process basically went smoothly. It took a long time, but uh, there was a feeling that there was a lot of information that was available to people and it was made freely available. So I'd like to personally thank all of those who were involved this year in the discussion around the school budget. Any questions, discussion? Come on up. First Rich and then she um, Seamus. Uh, Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. I'm not opposed to the school committee budget. Actually, I'm in favor of it. But I have a, a comment on how they handle a certain item. I don't agree with it. Everybody is aware that the state requires the town to give the school net school spending. So the town writes them out a blank check or with the amount on it, gives it to the school committee, and they do whatever they want with it. That's fine. I have an issue with the amount over net school spending. In this case, it's the normal $305,000 that we give them every year. That amount should be handled through a separate appropriation. That's like the highway department asking for $305,000 and not accounting for it. They do whatever they want with it. We don't do budgets that way on the town side. So anything over net school spending, should they should come to the town. It should be through an appropriation or a motion specifically. And at the end of the school year, if it's not spent, it should be turned over to the town. If there's any money left over, like every other town department. So I'm just asking for accountability of money they get from the town above net school spending. And maybe the town attorney could comment on it, or the uh, uh, outside town CPA could comment on it, if I'm correct. Um, Rich, I, I disagree with you, uh, but let me offer perspective, which uh, says in one case, what you're asking for is already here. Uh, when we present the budget like it is, uh, we split it up between expenses and uh, compensation. Um, anyone who comes to town meeting and is a voter about town meeting can ask to amend the budget. And if you want to amend the budget by taking $305,000 from it, someone can offer that motion, that motion, and then that would effectively become a discussion about that $305,000. But unless that happens, there's no reason to en approve anything other than this is the school department and this is what we recommend as a school department budget. And as a matter of fact, the Finance Committee is the one who puts together this final, these final budgets, and we are recommending to you that this amount of money be spent on the schools this year. Okay, that's exactly where, what I was going to do. I was going to offer an amendment right now to reduce the school budget by $305,000. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make this an issue for the next town meeting. But if you want me to do it right now, I'll do it right now. John, do you know what the school is spending at $305,000 on? Specifically, by line. Um, the uh, budget for the school does not depend, matter of fact, the budget for the individual departments does not depend on specific line items. Their budget is built up that way, but the town has no authority to vote for specific line items unless it is an entirely separate budget. Uh, so that there is no department here for which we have voted for specific items. We voted for a lump sum of expenses and we voted for compensation. Uh, same thing here with the school. They have a little more leeway than that even. So you, when, you, when you're given a lump sum, when you're given a lump sum, you can say where that as lump sum is going, and you can pick out wherever you want for $305,000. I agreed with you that for net school spending, you just give them the money and they spend it whatever, they, whatever way they want, that's fine. No, for any, for any department, we just give them the money. Well, we shouldn't do that. But if that's they, the they law. Should, they should be accountable for the $305,000 like anybody else here, anybody but, else. Rich, that's Massachusetts law. And what we're doing is presenting the budgets in accordance with Massachusetts law. I know what the law is, John. Thank you. Come on forward.
Seamus Connolly, 21 Ferry Hill Road, Granby, Mass. School budgets, school budgets are important. Without uh, the budgets that are proposed by the Finance Committee, by Chair Lynn Rivera, he has never let you, he's never let you down. You've elected him since before I was, since before I was born, as far as I know. I believe, you know what I mean, you know, they're just obeying the state and federal requirements. Without school activities or school sports, students get bored. After school, without after school activities, crime could go up in the, in the town of Granby. Warren and Palmer have less school programs than we do. Do you want crime? Do you want kids crashing their cars or bored and nothing to do? I sure don't want the crime rate to go up, so please, Vote yes on the proposed budget by Chairman Levera. Madam Moderator, I bring my I yield my time back. Thank you. Any other discussion? So what we're gonna do is vote on item one, and then we will present the rest of the items in blocks of four and vote on each one separately. So all those in favor of item one. Under the motion, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. Item one passes by a majority. Mr. Libera will now present items two through five. I will ask for a second and then give you time to discuss each one. Thank you. Item two, same motion, school department transportation, $807,717. Item three, same motion, the moderator, salary, $175, expenses, $75, total, $250. Item four, same motion, selectmen, salary, $9,798, personal services, $271,820, Expenses, $157,660. Capital outlay, $27,000 for a total of $466,278. Item five, same motion, finance committee. Expenses, $1,852. Can I have a second for items two through five? Are there any questions on item two? Any discussion on item three? Any discussion on item four? Any discussion on item five? In order for these to pass, they must pass by majority. So all those in favor of item two, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item two passes by uh, passage unanimously. All those in favor of item three? Thank you. All those opposed? You opposed? Item three passage unanimously. All those in favor of item four? Thank you. All those opposed? Item four passes unanimously. And item five, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Item five, passage unanimously. Mr. Libero will now present items six through nine. Thank you. Item six, same motion, town and Gowton. Personal services, $30,000. Expenses, $27,050. Total, $57,050. Item seven, same motion. Assessors, salary, $11,217. Personal services, $30,520. Expenses, $20,109. Total, $61,846. Item eight, same motion. Town treasurer, salary, $50,415. Expenses, $9,500. Total, $59,915. Item nine, same motion, tax collector. 
salary $43,880, personal services $11,700, expenses $21,190, a total of $76,770. Seconds for six through nine. Any discussion on item six? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item six, passage unanimously. Any questions on item seven? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item seven, passage unanimously. Any discussion on item eight? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item eight passes unanimously, and any discussion on item nine? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Oh, I'm sorry. Joe Furnia, 154 Taylor Street. Just a question, uh, for example, a tax collector, the salary says 43,880, but in last year's annual budget, it has that individual at $56,289. So I'm just trying to reconcile how we vote one and then we have a different rate. Okay, Joe, if you look at the revenues that come in, we, get, we collect what are called demand fees for people who are late in paying real estate, motor vehicle excise. It would be under the revenue section, Joe. Okay. And she gets paid whatever she charges in demand fees. That's what she gets paid in addition to the 43. The, in addition to the 43. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? So all those in favor of item nine? Thank you. Any opposed? Item nine, passage unanimously. Mr. Libero will now present the motion, um, the items 10 through 13. Thank you. Item 10, the same motion. Personnel board, expenses $500. Item 11, the same motion, town clerk. Salary $55,285, personal services $3,000, expenses $2,565, capital outlay $2,195, total $63,045. Item 12, same motion, Board of Registrars. Personal services $2,000, expenses $30,175, Total $32,175. Item 13, same motion, Board of Appeals. Expenses $1,640. Second. Is there any discussion on item 10? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 10, passage unanimously. Any questions on item 11? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 11 is unanimous. Any questions on 12? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 12 is unanimous. And all those in, uh, any questions on 13? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 13, passage unanimously. Mr. Libero will now present items 14 through 17. Thank you. Item 14, same motion, public buildings. Personal services, $182,936. Expenses, $494,644. Capital outlay, $13,500. Total, $691,080. Item 15, same motion, police department. Personal services, $1,013,895. Expenses, $56,011.
capital outlay $1,000, total $1,070,906. Item 16, same motion, auxiliary police, expenses $1,875. Item 17, same motion, dispatch, personal services $215,984. Expenses $34,546, total $250,530. Second. Any questions on item 14? All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 14 passes unanimously. Any questions on item 15? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? It's unanimous. All, uh, any questions on item 16? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Item 16 passes unanimously, and item 17, any questions? So all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 17 passes unanimously. Mr. Glessman will now present most uh, items 18 through 21. Madam Moderator, same motion, fire department, personal services $434,230, expenses $40,687, out of state travel $2,600, Capital outlay, $43,525 for a total of $521,042. Same motion, inspections department. Six, personal services, $65,009. Expenses, $23,573 for a total of $82,269. Item 20, same motion, Preventive Inspections Board of Health, Personal services, $13,260. Expenses, $3,258. Total, $16,518. Item 21, same motion, seal or weights and measures. Expenses, $2,730. Can I have a second? Any questions on item 18? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Passage unanimously. Any questions on 19? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Passage unanimously. Any questions on 20? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Passage unanimously. And then any questions on 21? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Passage unanimously. Mr. Glesson will present the items 22 through 25. Item 22, same motion, emergency management expenses, $9,272. Item 23, same motion, highway department, personal services, $387,347, expenses $112,550, maintenance of roads $243,700, capital outlay $5,000. Item 24, same motion, snow and ice control, personal services $74,847, expenses $56,000, Maintenance of roads, $122,000. Capital, $18,000. A total of $270,847. Item 25, same motion, cemetery. Personal services, $21,121. Expenses, $3,661. For a total of Can I have a second for 22-25? Any question or discussions on item 22? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Unanimous. 
Any questions on 23? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? 23 passes unanimously. All those in favor of 20, I'm sorry, discussion on 24? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? 24 passes unanimously. And any discussion on 25? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? 25 passes unanimously. Mr. Glesson will now present items 26 through 29. Same motion, item 26, Board of Health, salary $2,898, personal services, er, personal services $27,864, and expenses $8,809 for a total of $39,571. Item 27, same motion, Council on Aging, personal services $84,003, senior lunch, Expenses $4,273 for a total of $88,276. Item 28, same motion, senior lunch program, personal services $20,857. Item 29, same motion, veteran services $13,050. Expenses $60,700 for a total of $73,750. Second. Any questions on item 26? All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? 26 passage unanimously. Any questions on 27? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 27 passage unanimously. Any questions on 28? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? <clears throat> 28 passage unanimously. And then item 29, any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 29, passage unanimously. Mr. Wilson will now present the items 30 through 33. Item 30, same motion, public library, personal services, 127,613, expenses, 43,219, less grant in aid, minus 12,771, net expenses, 30,448, total $158,061. Item 31, same motion, historical commission, expenses, $250. Item 32, same motion, 250th parade, expenses, zero. Item 33, same motion, retirement of debt, principal on permanent debt, 525,800. Second. Any questions on item 30? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 30, passage unanimously. All those, uh, any questions on 31? Please raise your cards if you're in favor of 31. Thank you. Any opposed? 31, pass it unanimously. Any questions on item 32? All those in favor? Please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? 32, pass it unanimously. Any questions on 33? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? 33 passage unanimously. Mr. Wilson will present items 34 through 37. Item 34, same motion, interest 479,132. Item 35, same motion, casualty and liability insurance 239,575. Item 36, same motion, county retirement, 1,053,436. Item 37. This here. Same motion, yeah. Workman's compensation, 152,741. 
And second. Any questions on items 34, 35, 36, or 37? All right, all those in favor of 34, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Unanimous. All those in favor of our article, I'm sorry, item 35, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? 35, passage unanimously. All those in favor of 36? Thank you. Any opposed? 36, passage unanimously. And all those in favor of 37? Thank you. Any opposed? 37, passage unanimously. Mr. Wilson will now present items 38 through 41. Item 38, same motion, council and governments, zero. Item 39, same motion, unemployment compensation, 49,861. Item 40, same motion, group health slash life insurance, 1,379,637. Item 41, same motion, reserve fund, 130,000. Second. Any discussion on 38, 39, 40, or 41? All those in favor of item 38, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? 31, I'm sorry, 38 passes unanimously. All those in favor of 39? Thank you. Any opposed? 39 passes unanimously. All those in favor of item 40? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 40 passes unanimously, and all those in favor of 41? Thank you. Any opposed? 41 passes unanimously. That was the fastest budget in, I venture to say, our Granby history. The moderator will now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 37. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from the Capital Equipment Needs Stabilization Fund the amount of $120,800 for the purpose of reducing the funding from tax levy for fiscal year 2020 appropriations. Can I have a second? Any discussion? The Capital Improvement Committee approves equipment purchases for the town. This is the amount for the fiscal year 20 debt services associated with prior purchases that were done throughout borrowing. Any discussion? So in order for the motion under Article 37 to pass, this must be a two-thirds majority. So all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Anyone opposed? So Article 37 passes unanimously. The moderator will call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 38. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from account number 30-122-5801-000 bond premiums to be applied $41,061.84 for the purpose of reducing the fund funding from the tax levy for fiscal year 2020 appropriations. Second. Any discussion? Uh, when the town borrowed for the construction of East Meadow uh, building the project, the town received a premium uh, for the sales of the bond. And speaking with the Department of Revenue, the town needs to apply a portion of the premium towards the debt services for these bonds. As the town did not do this for the prior two years, to see amount represents three three years worth of offsets. Thank you. Any questions? This must pass by a majority. So all those in favor? Thank you. Anyone opposed? Passage unanimously. And Mr. Sexton will now present the motion under Article 39. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to assess the amounts raised and appropriate under these articles and warrants on the, on the Granby Estates and personal property of the town of Granby. Second, and discussion. 
Uh, this article allows assessors to issue tax bills for fiscal year budget uh, 20. Any questions? This must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Anyone opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now calls for a motion to dissolve the annual town meeting. Second. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Great, thank you.